Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson video where we are interpreting graphs of functions. So we're gonna be looking at four different graphs throughout this video and we're gonna be discussing the parts of the graphs, increasing, decreasing, intercepts, all that good stuff. So the very first two problems we're gonna look at, we're gonna actually look at them side by side at the same time here and we're gonna answer some of the questions at the same time so that we can make some good comparisons. So for example, Graph on the left, is that linear or nonlinear? Clearly it is a straight line, so we know it is linear. Whereas the graph on the right, that's called a parabola, that is not a straight line, so therefore it is simply nonlinear. Okay, x-intercept. The x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis. So in my linear graph on the left, I see that my graph crosses the x-axis at three. So I can either say, oh, my x-intercept is three, or I can actually list the ordered pair and say the x-intercept is at three, zero. Whereas over on the right, I see that this curve actually crosses the x-axis two times. So there's actually two x-intercepts. There's one here and one here. So my x-intercepts are at two, negative two, zero, and my other x-intercept is actually at the origin at zero, zero. Whereas when I look at my y-intercept, my y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So my graph on the left, I can see that it crosses the y-axis right up here, which is at three. So I can again either say, oh, my y-intercept is at three, or I can say it is the ordered pair of zero, three. And over here on the right, I see that my curve touches the y-axis actu actually at the same point that one of the x-intercepts was at the origin. So my y-intercept here is at zero, zero. Is there line symmetry? Line symmetry is when you can draw a straight line, vertical line, right down the middle, and it folds it in half. So for example, my hand doesn't have symmetry because if I put a line down the middle, I can't fold it in half. It doesn't match perfectly. Um, a line that looks like my pencil, a graph that looks like my pencil doesn't have line symmetry because if I try to reflect this pencil over, it would actually look like this. But if I have a U-shaped curve, my parabola, and I put a line down the middle, that will cut it in half. That is line symmetry because both sides would reflect over. So over on the left here, there is definitely not line symmetry. I can't draw a vertical line down the middle, but look over here on the right. If I draw a vertical line here, that definitely is the line of symmetry. It cuts the parabola in half right down the middle and it's actually symmetrical. I can fold that curve right over and it will match up. So this one does have line symmetry and if yes, x equals. The equation of a vertical line is always x equals and I can see that this crosses the x-axis at negative one. So the equation of that line is simply x equals negative one. Awesome. I'm going to zoom my screen out just a bit. There we go, so that we can see the rest of the problems. So now I have a couple questions. I have positive and negative. So positive, the positive part of the graph is above the x-axis. So I'm just gonna make a little note, above x-axis. I know that's really messy. So therefore the negative part of the graph is below the x-axis. Now I notice in my first graph here that all the way up to the intercept of three. So up until that point, we read graphs from left to right. So going from left down to right, that graph was positive. It was above the x-axis. And every value on the x-axis to the left of three is less than three. Every x value that is less than three on this graph is in the positive region. Because also think about it, when x is negative three, it's in the positive. When x is negative two, it's in the positive. Negative one, zero, one, two. All of those x values are in the positive part of the graph, where the moment it hits three, everything after three is below the x-axis. So when x is four, when x is five, that's the negative part of the graph. It's under the x-axis. So everything less than three is in the positive range. And all the x values of this graph that are greater than three is where the negative region would be. Let's try that again, but let's look at the next graph. Now this graph actually has two re regions that are positive. This region up here that I'm circling is positive, and this region up here is also positive. Now, this positive stops at a negative two. So everything up until negative two is in the positive part of the graph. 
Well, everything before negative 2 means it was less than negative 2. So there's two parts. All the values of x that are less than negative 2 is a positive part of the graph, but then look where it gets positive again. It gets positive at 0, and everything to the right of 0 is greater than 0. So it's also positive where x is greater than 0. Now, negative is the space in between. Negative is that little loop in the bottom that's actually in between negative 2 and 0. So the way we talk about all the numbers that are greater than negative 2 but also less than 0 at the same time looks like a compound inequality of negative 2 is less than x is less than 0. That shows me that all x values that are greater than negative 2 but less than 0 are in the region of the graph where it's negative. It's below the x-axis. Okay, how about we take a look at increasing? So increasing is when the graph is going up. We read graphs from left to right. So when I look at this first graph, this entire graph is just going down, down, down. So is any part of it increasing? None. And if none of it's increasing, that means the entire graph here is simply decreasing. So the whole thing of it, I'm just going to write all, the whole graph, all of it is decreasing. But now over here on the right, and I'm going to do us a favor and I'm going to erase my markings so that I could talk about this next part in a fresh light when I'm talking about increasing and decreasing. Now what we have to imagine here is that let's say when we read this graph from left to right that this is a um, you diving into the water and then coming right back up. So what would happen is when I read this graph I'm actually reading it in this direction. It's decreasing, 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 stopping at the very bottom and then it's making its way back up. So when I read this graph, I actually start out decreasing. It's going down, down, down. And the lowest part that it drops is when x is at a negative 1 value. So all the values before negative 1 is when the graph was decreasing. So under decreasing, I'm going to write x is less than negative 1. But then look what happens. Once I get to x values that are greater than negative 1, everything to the right of negative 1, that's when this graph is increasing and going up. And the way we represent that is x is greater than negative 1. Relative extrema. Relative extrema is when you can either see the highest point, the max, or the lowest point, the minimum. And in this linear equation, this graph, they're just going to extend in both directions forever. It's never going to end up top. It's never going to end on the bottom. I'm never going to see the highest point or the lowest point. So relative extrema, there's none. And the end behavior just simply means what's going to happen as this graph continues to go? Well, this graph is certainly decreasing, so I'm going to say it's going to decrease. The end behavior is that it's going to continue to decrease. Sorry for the messy decrease there. Okay, now in the second problem, the curve here, so relative extrema, can I see the highest point? No, because these graphs are going to continue to go up and up forever. However, I do see the lowest point. I can see the minimum of this graph. I can see that the lowest point is definitely here. And so the x value of my extrema, that is at x equals negative 1. So at negative 1, that is my lowest point. I can also list the ordered pair and say, oh, the relative extrema is at negative 1, negative 1. Awesome. End behavior, so we read graphs from left to right. So this graph is technically starting from the left. It's decreasing. You're diving into the pool, and then you're making your way back up out of the pool. So if this curve was to continue, it's going to continue to increase. Okay, we're going to use try all of these skills again with two additional problems. All right, so same skills. Ready? Linear or nonlinear? Over on the left, definitely linear. But over on the right, definitely nonlinear. Linear means a straight line. If it's not a straight line, it's not linear. Nonlinear. X-intercept. Over here on the left, I see that it's crossing the x-axis at 2. So my x-intercept is at 2, 0. Over here on the right, I see I have two x-intercepts. I have an x-intercept at negative 2, 0. And also uh, positive 2, 0. So two x-intercepts there. Y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So over here on the left, I see it crosses the y-axis at 0, negative 1. And then over here on the right, I see that this graph crosses the y-axis at that tippy-top point at 0, 4. Is there line symmetry over here on the left? No. I can't put a vertical line anywhere in this graph and have it cut it perfectly symmetrical. 
But over here on the right, I can sketch actually right over the y-axis. The y-axis is the line that cuts that graph in half right down the middle. So my parabola does have line symmetry. And where the y-axis is, that's actually the equation of x equals 0. Positive. Positive is anything above above the x-axis. And so to look at the rest of these problems, I'm going to clear this up so we can see each part very carefully. So my positive region, and I'm gonna grab a highlighter actually here too. Positive are the values that are above the x-axis. So this section is positive. On the other graph, this is the section that's positive. So now let me take a look. When I'm looking at my positive region, I see that this part starts at two. Everything that's greater than 2 on the x-axis is where the positive part of the graph is. x is greater than 2. Here in this graph, I see that it starts at negative 2 and it goes all the way to a positive 2. And so that's when we write that special compound inequality that, hey, the positive region is negative 2 is less than x is less than positive 2. That's a compound inequality saying all the x values greater than negative 2 and less than positive 2 at the same time. Whereas negative is everything to the left. So all the values to the left of 2 are when x is less than 2. And then here I have two negative regions. So I have everything to the left of negative 2 is underneath. So x is less than negative 2. But I also have another negative region here, all the x values that are greater than 2. Increasing, the entire graph over here on the left is increasing, so all of it. None of it is decreasing. And now this graph on the right. We read graphs again from left to right. So I read this graph from left, like I'm shooting a basketball up in the air and then it's making its way back down. This graph is increasing, 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 stops, and then it decreases. And notice the change is at an x value of zero. So the entire graph is increasing for all x values that are less than zero. And then once the x values are greater than zero, that's where it actually starts to decrease. Relative extrema, can I see the highest or lowest point on my graph on the left? No, so none. And this graph is going to continue to increase. Whereas over on the right, do I see the highest point or lowest point? I do. My relative extrema is this maximum point, that highest point and that point is at 0, 4. And now end behavior. If I shoot the basketball up and then it's making its way back down, the end of that graph is going to continue to decrease. That's the direction of the graph. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.